Welcome to the Superstar Communicator Podcast. My name is Susan Heaton Wright, a leading impact speaking and communications expert. My aim is to show you how to make an impact so you will be heard, listened to, and respected for career success. Listen weekly to the podcast and go to our website, superstarcommunicator.com. Hello everybody, this is Susan Heaton-Wright. Thank you very much for tuning in. I have got the window open. It's late or late autumn, early autumn. It's the equinox tonight. And I hope that you can hear some birds singing in the background. There's um, some leaves that are blowing in the wind. It's a lovely sunny day. And I think it's really important that we embrace these days because we just heard from our Prime Minister that we should work from home more and that there would be big restrictions in the next six months with our everyday lives. And this is what this particular podcast is about. I want to make sure that you understand actually how we can work remotely and how we can work from home and I was going to do this as a podcast even before the announcements today from the PM prompted by a big article in the Times on Saturday asking is home working more productive bosses aren't sure And as I say, even before the um, announcement was made today, I was going to say to those bosses, you need to come to terms with the new norm, that we are working in a different way. Even if you do not like the fact that everybody is not in the office and you can micromanage them and double check on them and presenteeism and all of those things, we aren't able to do that. And for many people, either they are unwilling to come into the office, they can't come into the office now, or with socially distanced um, workplaces, it is not possible. Now, only last week, my husband, who is within, works within the property sector, actually was told that within his organisation, They were not planning to have people coming back into work until April. And that was even before these statements were made by the government. So we need to get used to the fact that we are working in a different way. But I want to go back to the original um, article that prompted me this. And I want to focus on comments that some leaders said about people working from home. So Lord Wolfson of Apsley Gees, who's the chief executive next, spoke for millions of office staff working from home when he bemoaned the scourge of he called death by deck. He condemned the slideshow presentations beamed via Zoom Google Meet or Microsoft Teams into employees' homes that transform meetings from productive exchanges of ideas into boring one-way lectures. Hallelujah, I totally agree with that. Um, For the last six months, I've been delivering multiple virtual workshops and I have been using slideshows. However, I have made sure that they are purely interactive, that I have other ways of getting people to contribute to the ideas, that the slideshows are only there to be used to start a conversation. It sounds as though many, many more people need training on facilitating virtual meetings and making an impact on virtual meetings. Do contact me for more information because to be honest, That is what I focus on. He said further on, he said that um, death by deck was one drawback of home working. 
alongside with the absence of those chance meetings and spontaneous conversations that make a business sing. We have to be more creative about that. As I said before, you need to be able to deliver meetings in a very effective way and this is the sort of training I do. What we can do for those spontaneous coffee only yesterday I met up with somebody virtually we had a virtual coffee. This is the time to really be proactive and contact colleagues, contact your colleagues and contacts and friends and ask them if they want to have a virtual coffee or virtual lunch with you so that you catch up. It's really, really important that you do that. Then we've got Jamie Dimon, who's the chief executive of JP Morgan. He also laments the lack of creative combustion in his largely empty office and trading rooms. Productivity at the bank, which employs over half a million people with 16,000 in the UK was noticeably low, lower on Mondays and Fridays, he added, coming close to implying that his colleagues were skiving either end of the weekend. An interesting one. First of all, I think this rather sniffs of presenteeism, uh, that he's wanting people in the office that, that they are present so that they are proving that they are working. Also, I wonder if the way that he's expecting people to work, the way that he's expecting people to have meetings is exhausting for people. And this is impacting on the productivity of the workforce. How does he measure productivity? Does he measure it by how many hours they're logged on to the internet? Interesting, isn't it? Because maybe the data that he's using to measure this is not very accurate. Also, it might be that he's not given the appropriate training and support to people to make sure that they are able to deliver their work effectively. One of the things that I feel is very, very interesting is that there are a number of people who are in one bedroom flats in small areas that they might well be sharing with other people. One person is on the dining room table, the other person is on a laptop sitting on the bed. And, you know, that must be absolutely exhausting. Instead of complaining um, about your workforce, why don't you check that they have the right hardware, that they have the right furniture, perhaps a, um, a desk that they can sit up, a chair that will support them so that they can work from home. Okay, so who else have we got moaning here? Um, now, it's really interesting because the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development found that 29% um, of people felt that home working had actually boosted their productivity because they had a little bit more time at the beginning and the end of the day. They had a little bit more energy because they didn't have to commute sometimes for several hours each way a day. 37% um, felt that there was no difference and 28% felt it had reduced productivity. It would be very, very interesting with those people that felt it had reduced productivity, whether it's because as a whole, people are not not being effective with meetings or they feel that they need to be in virtual meetings all, all the time. Now then, it was very interesting also that a study said that on average, a work day virtually was 48.5 minutes longer when done remotely. So employers are actually getting better value for money in that. So come on, employers, stop moaning there. Let me have a look at somebody else. We've got Dame Jane Ann Gadia. I hope I've pronounced her name correctly. She's the former boss of Virgin Money. She says... I think it does stifle creativity. 
It prevents those sparks that come from having a cigarette together or an informal cup of coffee. She has nevertheless abandoned London offices of her new financial services company, Snoop, saving on rent. And she says that on the whole, working from home is going well. So instead of moaning about those creativity sparks that you're missing out on, what could you do differently to try and include that? Could you have a weekly brainstorm with your team so that people can just come up with ideas? Could you arrange those virtual coffees or those virtual cigarettes together that would be an equivalent? I know it isn't totally the same, but let's think outside the box. Then we've got Robert Swannell, the former chairman of Marks and Spencers. He lamented a recent FT City Network conference, the lack of chance conversations social interactions and snippets overhead, overheard that allow networks to flourish. Um, I, I, absolutely, we have to be aware that this is just not a possibility now. And we've got to think outside the box of how we could recreate that. Could we find out who, I know there's GDPR, but could we find out at the City Network people that you've not talked to before um, connect with them on LinkedIn, see who else is there, have a chance conversation with them because it's those moments that will recreate that, um, that, that chance creativity. So then we've got Nick Train, a fund manager and co-founder of Linzel Train, said this week that solitary working was not a good idea for him. He was losing the plot, he said, and missed having a reflected reflective sobering cup of coffee with a respected colleague you know um there are there are quite a few themes coming out of this aren't there that we there are people that are mourning the old way of working and the sad thing is that at least for the next six months we will not have this as an option and we have got to learn to work alongside and live with the virus in the best way possible so if you are lamenting the loss of having a little chat with somebody get on virtual pick up the phone um, have a virtual coffee with people push yourself so that you can still have that experience which and I could go on. There are lots of these leaders that are complaining that spontaneity and working in teams and all of those things are missing. OK, for those business leaders, let's face it, you have reduced costs because your workforce are working from home. Here are three things that I believe that you need to do. You need to make sure that your, your employees all have good hardware, up-to-date software, um, a place that they can work in comfort. I don't mean lying on a bed, but, you know, a, a, a little table, a little desk or a table, a chair that supports them so they can work. You need to provide some training, such as training that I do, where you can encourage leaders and managers to facilitate and lead meetings in an effective way. You do not need everybody in a meeting all of the time and virtual meetings are even more tiring than real life ones. So you need to think of the structure, how it's run, the rules surrounding that, who you invite, what the content is. Um, and as I say, this is exactly the sort of thing that I work with people on to run very effective meetings. And the last thing about people missing each other, think of ways how you can still bond as a team, whether it's um, your own department or um, interdepartmental you could have quizzes you, you know there are loads of things that you can do think about how you can do that virtually how you as a leader or manager 
can make sure that everybody's feeling connected, that everybody still feels part of the company because that will help other people. I hope this has been of interest. Um, I know it's been a bit of a rant. This is ongoing at the moment and I know that as I speak tonight there will be another um, talk from the, from the headmaster, from the, the prime minister on what the next steps are. But you've got to think about the positives, not mourn the past, but work with our new normal. Thank you very much for listening. This is Susan from Superstar Communicator. You have been listening to the Superstar Communicator podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and review the podcast on iTunes and on apps. Please contact us if you want to discuss any topic, could suggest a topic for us to include, or a guest who could come onto the podcast. Go to superstarcommunicator.com.